All right, hello music technology classes. We're gonna keep working on scales and chords and inversions and look at a real world example today. Um, shooting from a different angle, so we'll see if this works. Uh, today we're gonna do G major. So uh, we start off with our treble clef. We're gonna do the G major scale. Elephant's got big dirty feet, F-A-C-E, face in the space. G is on our second line. Hopefully you can see that at this angle. I'll zoom in later. So we're starting on G. And we're going to do whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, starting on G. So from G, whole step up is A, skip the black key. Whole step up from A is B, skip the black key. Then we need a half step, B to C. Whole step, skip the black key. Whole step, skip the black key. Whole step, skip the white key, land here. First accidental of the scale. Uh, since this was E and we went up a whole step from there, the next letter of the alphabet is F. Here's F. We raise the frequency to get to this black key, that makes this F sharp because it is up from F, F sharp, and then G. So I'm gonna write that out. Uh, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp up here, and G sits on the top line. Um, bring that a little bit closer so that we can see it. There we have it. So G goes up to sitting on the top line there. Uh, there's our G major scale. It's going to write in my scale degrees. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one. And now, the way triads work is that if I take the first note, the third note, and the fifth note, and stack them on top of each other, that gives me what's called the one chord. And I use Roman numerals for chords. So Roman numeral one is going to be one, three, five, all lines. Oops, there we go. Now the four chord is going to start on the fourth note of the scale and go every other note of the scale. Everything comes from the scale. Four, six, and one will be the four chord. So that's going to be C, E, and G, all space notes. Four, six, and one. And then the five chord is going to start on five. And it's going to go five, seven, and two. Because it's every other note and the scale just like a line in geometry class, goes on into infinity in both directions. So if we're doing every other note starting on five, we do five, skip six, seven, skip one, two comes next, and two is gonna be a line note. So it's gonna be D, F sharp, I'm gonna put my sharp sign here, I'm drawing these extra big so hopefully you can see them, and A, five, seven, two. And I'll zoom that in. That should all be very much review. Then we talked about inversions, so here's the thing. As long as I've got one, three, and five, no matter what order they're in, it's the one chord. But if one is not on the bottom, like it's been inverted, then those have names. So if I have my one chord in root position, it's one, three, and five. Right, one, three, five, one's on the bottom. If I take one off the bottom and put it on the top, three is now on the bottom. So it's still 1, 3, and 5, but it goes 3, and then 5, and then 1. And so that's called the 1, 6 chord. It's in 6 inversion because the distance from the bottom note to the top note is 6 notes. And in musical intervals, you count the note you're on as 1. So we have B, C, D, E, F, G. That's 6 notes from B to G, 3 to 1. So that makes it the 1, 6 chord. Then if I put the three on top, and I'm going to need to use ledger lines to do that, right? There's three on top. Looks terrible. Fine. Three, one, and then five on the line is on the bottom. From five to one is four notes. Five, six, seven, one. And from five to three is six notes. Five, six, seven, one, two, three. So this would be the one chord in six, four inversion. And these symbols are known as figured bass notation. They go back to the 1600s. They're very standardized. And I can do that for any chord, right? And so yesterday we saw that. Um, I want to move on and look at a real world example. So let's say your name's Mozart, right? You want to write a song in G major. The chords relate to the melody because the notes in the chord are the notes that are called chord tones. So there's seven notes in a scale, but three notes in a chord. There can be four notes in a chord. And I want to introduce that before we get to this example. The five chord is special, and we're going to talk more about this tomorrow. So the five chord, 
and get another triple cliff here. In this case is D, D, F sharp, and A, five, seven, and two. And I'm gonna write this down an octave, right? Because remember, it goes on to infinity in both directions. So D, F sharp, and A is also the five chord, five, seven, two, right? So here's D, F sharp, A, lower octave, D, F sharp, A, and the higher octave, it could also be here, it could also be here. Repeats itself into infinity forever and ever and ever. On the five chord especially, the names of the notes in the chord are the root, the third, and the fifth because of the distance from the note you're starting on. You can add what's called a seventh, which is another note on top of the chord. And so this is the five chord. This gets a little complicated, but it makes sense over there. The five seven chord is going to be five, seven, two, and four. Five, seven, two, four. So that's not a triad anymore. It's called a seventh chord. It's got four notes in it, but you're still doing every other note of the scale. Five, seven, two, four. Five, skip six, seven, skip one, two, skip three, four. Sounds like this. Uh, lots and lots of American music uses that chord. Okay, back to Mozart. Mozart's going to write a song. Most songs that are very predictable start with the one chord. So here's my one chord in G major. You have all heard this song a million times. I'm going to pan over a little bit so we can see it better, maybe, here. Great. It's called uh -huh, Eine Kleine Nachtmusik, uh, which means a little bit of night music in German. Uh, this is actually a... Uh, string Serenade, Mozart wrote this for an outdoor party at the palace in Vienna in like 1780-something. Anyway, the melody goes like this. You've heard it a lot. There are only two chords in that whole song. Uh, you can kind of see them right there. That's just the first four measures of the melody. The first part is the one chord. And so I'm going to analyze this using the same G major scale from over here. The first note, these are piano fingerings, sorry about that. First note is G, that's scale degree one. The second note in the melody is D, that's scale degree five, and that goes back to one. And this is five again, back to one, back to five, back to one, and then there's a B, that's scale degree three, five. So for that first melody, every single note there is in the one chord. It's either one or three or five, and it sounds like this. If I just play that all together, that's my one chord with five on the bottom. So it's kind of like an inverted five chord, right? Then the scale degrees here, that's a C, that's scale degree four, and then that's an A, that's two, and then four, and then two, and then four, two, down to seven, back up to two, to five. If we look at those, five, seven, two, and four, well, five, seven, two, and four, that's the five chord. So the way you would analyze this is I put a big fat Roman numeral one here, big fat Roman numeral one here, big fat five here with a little seven, and five, seven. So the way the song goes is bum, 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 bum. So the way melodies and chords interact is melodies are based on the notes that are the chord tones of the chord you're using at that time. So if we go back over to our example here, we got our one chord and our five chord. So if you're Mozart 300 years ago and you want to write a song, this is probably the most famous melody that uses only chord tones ever. So here's our exercise for today uh, based on the chords in G major. I'll zoom this in in a second. I'm going to draw another treble clef. Um, I'm going to do an example here. Uh, if I were to draw this, uh, da, 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 right? So I have drawn B, D, and G, and that is scale degree three, scale degree five, and scale degree one. If I want to know what chord that is, you would respond, that is the one chord in six inversion, or the one six. Write that any way you want. Uh, a second example, before I give you ones you're going to do, if I was to do this, uh, da, 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 that is E, G, and B. Well, i got to go to my scale. E is scale degree 6. 
g is scale degree 1, b is scale degree 3. So that's a triad, because it's every other note, and it starts on 6. So that's going to be the 6 chord. And so that sounds like this. So here's my scale. Whole step, whole step, half step. Here's my 1 chord. The first thing I wrote, here's my 1 6 chord. Here's my 6 chord, starting on scale degree 6. Uh, I want to know the Roman numerals for the following chords. Uh, and I'll draw it and then I'll hold it up to the camera because we got to make these kind of neat here. Like that. And then we'll get to here. There's number one, number two, number three, number four. Great. So I'll hold that up to the camera so we can see it. Nice and easy there. So I want to know the Roman numerals and inversion if necessary. Number two and number three are both in it. Oh, and number four. Oh, never mind. They're all in inversion. So I want to know the inversion of the chord and what Roman numeral it would be. So figure out the scale degrees. Uh, good luck out there. More on this tomorrow so we can get into actually writing songs. Stay safe. Bye.